An intermission is defined as a pause or a break in something, used most often to refer to a break during a play, a movie, or a concert. I'm your host, Leah. I'm Phil. And I'm Steve. Today's episode is about an intermission and a walk down memory lane. If you have an appetite for the strange and bizarre, then pull up a chair and grab a spoon for another intriguing serving of Remnant Stew. Remnant Stew is gluten-free, organic, made from all natural, free-range ingredients and guaranteed to provide the recommended daily serving of curiosity. From the title of the episode and the teaser you just heard, you may be a little concerned that Remnant Stew podcast is coming to an end. Say it ain't so. I oh, thought no. I thought I would wait until the end to say anything, but oh, I hate no. to keep you in suspense, so I'm just going to say it. We're out of here. <laughs> no, no, we are not ending the You podcast. don't get to leave. No, sorry. <laughs> but we are taking an extended intermission. Yes, that's right. Due to work schedules, kids, my kids specifically, <laughs> uh, and life in general, I needed to take a break. So during that break, though, we're going to regroup reorganize a bit and come back even better than before, but with the same bizarre and intriguing stories you love. Well, I know this episode is marks our third anniversary of when our first episode dropped, uh, although we're counting uh, this as season four because we're in calendar year four. Uh, but um, every two weeks for the last three years, we've been putting out new episodes. With a couple bonuses. Yeah, we'll throw in some welcome. extra ones here yeah, and there. Welcome. And so we've loved doing all that, but... Uh, we need to take a bit of a sabbatical, and so uh, we'll be starting Season 5 sometime after the first of the year. Uh, don't know exactly the date yet, so stay tuned. We'll be letting you know. But for now, we'd like to thank you, our listeners, for sticking with us these last three years through all 80 episodes of Remnant Stew. And we want to thank you for the podcast being downloaded over 24,000 times. Yeah, 24,000. <laughs> and that's across 61 different countries. Now, we've gotten some nice reviews from people. I thought I'd just read a few of these. Uh, these are really, uh, we would love reading your reviews. This comes from somebody named Ranger Boyd. Either <laughs> one of you related to a Ranger Boyd? Not oh, that I'm aware not of. Not that I'm aware of. Uh, by the way, these can come through Apple Music. Ranger Boyd says, quote, fun and interesting, really fun podcast filled with interesting history, great voices who interact perfectly with each other to add personal <laughs> viewpoints. Well, thank oh, you very much. We oh, interact perfectly. You hear that? <laughs> you don't yeah, know how we're much. taking an intermission you mainly don't... so we have to be away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's not the reason. You don't know how much editing <laughs> Phil has to do to make us sound perfect, but anyway. Now uh, it's not perfect. This 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 <laughs> next one is from somebody called Jazz Finger. Does that ring a bell with anyway? <laughs> everyone now is raising their fingers. Uh, jazz, actually, jazz fingers. This person actually <laughs> comes from, from Great Britain. Woohoo. So oh let's listen to this. Like a comfortable blanket. Oh, a wet nice? blanket? No, no, no. no. <laughs> 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 like did, a, they also didn't say weighted either. So. Right. <laughs> a, a comfortable blanket. You know, it's cool in the United Kingdom, so they, they had to have their blankets all around them. This show is a treasure. Really interesting topics read by a host with a great rapport. It's warm <laughs> and well produced with the underlying message to be kind and stay curious. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jazz Finger from the United <laughs> Kingdom. We really appreciate that. And I love that review. it's just one, one finger. One finger, <laughs> yeah. Now we go from Jazz Finger to Cat Lover 02202. That means uh, there's been a lot of cat lovers before them, I guess. But anyway. <laughs> wow. Quote This is amazing. 02021. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> this is amazing. I love how the podcast is in the format of learning but fun. Uh, that's uh, what we do around here. Exactly. We like we like to uh, make learning fun. That was my philosophy all my years of teaching because I felt like people learned better when they were having fun. Oh, yeah, and this final one from Marvel Lover 2.0. Okay, Phil, that's got to be you, right? I have no, <laughs> no, no. I don't think I honestly can create an account. Okay, Marvel Lover 2.0, quote, I love this podcast, best podcast ever, short and oh. to the point. Nice. So thank you so much yes. for uh, those wonderful reviews. And uh, if you'd like to leave a review on Apple Music, we would love to uh, read it along, too. Well, anyway, we've had so much fun with this uh, podcast so far, this intermission episode. We'd like to take a little look back at our past seasons 
and share some of our favorite episodes and favorite moments. Well, there, starting, there was a few. There was a few. <laughs> starting at season one, well, it was a short season. Start at the very and we, beginning. We actually started... We started recording in February, but we didn't launch until August because we were really trying to get that perfect rapport, right? right? Well, and uh, the pandemic hit in between there, yeah, too. Yeah, that's that was, right. Uh, the pandemic had a big deal on Kind of slowed us down a little bit. Did we, uh, ever, did we record with masks one time? Tried to record with masks? I don't remember. I, like I we think did. maybe we, we acted like we yeah. were going. Sure. <laughs> yeah, we recorded with, no ma- with, with, with masks. masks. Yeah, with that's masks. right. <laughs> well, mask uh, anyway. But when we, that first year, we recorded several episodes. I don't remember if it was six or seven, and some of them we even re-recorded to kind of get get it going. But once we did that, right before we launched, we all chose our favorite. It was unanimous. Oh, yes. Uh It's Balloonacy. Balloonacy, right. Balloonacy. Way to get started. When cheerful parade and party props go bad. Oh, seriously. (laughs) And and it's funny because when we started, when we launched that, I remember thinking, are we going to get so far out there and then look back on our first episode and our first season and cringe? About, and, but, no, you know, honestly, they hold up pretty well. I still giggle. Yeah. yeah. It, okay. It's either. So we either have not come very far. <laughs> but honestly, I mean, that first episode was awesome. I, I, and I, I still. I, I love the balloon palooza in Cleveland oh, that, yeah. where they let a, like a gazillion balloons loose in downtown and, and it, it caused created, all kind of havoc. Yeah, yeah. I, still, I, still so like the, I still like the story about the two French guys who decided to take up their buddies and go have a a duel. A, go a, have the duel oh yeah, they shot it, followed the a duel, shooting at each other and from the balloons. The first guy missed. Yeah. Oh wait, sorry, I gave the plot away. <laughs> uh, and then a lot there more was, good stories there. All right, yep. uh, episode set, uh, episode two was shark bait, um, sharks, organized crime, unsolved murder, and strange vomit. Well, oh, what, who wouldn't like a combination exactly. like that? <laughs> And then one of my favorites was All Aglow. All Aglow. Uh, is glowing a good thing or or what? So all the things that glow, the good, the bad, the downright freaky, which has one of my favorite stories, oh, the yeah. angel yeah. glow of the soldier's wounds oh, at Shiloh that was, Battlefield. That's right. Yeah, their they're, they're, they're wounds uh, actually did take on a glow. That was interesting and to look into. Civil War. That's right. right. And... Um, and then yes, the the glowing loogie, well, yeah, the shrimp the... that spits <laughs> yeah. the glowing loogie. I'm serious, that's the one that should stick out in your mind. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have lost and found finders keepers, things lost, things found, and things both lost and found. Yeah, you remember that turtle that was stuck in that attic in Brazil for thirty years, 30 and they years. finally they finally found it. He stayed. He was still alive. He's still alive. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Wasn't that with a record player? Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, yeah. St- he was uh, sitting in a record player, but they think he was eating termites all that time. So. Uh, you know, keep it. Away. I mean, that record player must be amazing now uh, too, right? <laughs> and then we had an episode just for our, uh, oh, yeah, our mascot. For, for our oh, mascot, right. Sir Kraken. And uh, thank you all for naming him. That's why. That's when we named him. I think. Right. In that uh, one. Yes, yeah. and so uh, we had the octopus. That was. That was dedicated to Sir Kraken. That's right. Sir Kraken and I have traveled uh, many world. places since then, and we're, we've got some more travel scheduled coming up. So we'll be watching our Facebook and social media for pictures of Sir Kraken's travels. I never thought I'd be jealous of a cephalopod. Cephal- <laughs> <laughs> Especially oh. a rubber one for that. that. <laughs> we're constantly jealous of it, of, of them, but this particular rubber one is been it, a lot more well traveled than I am. <laughs> well, then there's Yo Ho Ho. And a bottle of rum, seafarers, lore, and superstitions. Oh, that uh, was a good one. And oddly enough, this was our most downloaded episode of all, of all time. time. <laughs> People really love the yo ho ho. I think like. that just screams that we have to do one of those this season. Yeah, we need a, a follow up. <laughs> maybe yo ho ho ho. <laughs> well, <laughs> yo ho. <laughs> well, later on, we did do one on pirates. Well, so yeah. We'll get there, but. Right. And then for um, Halloween, it was around Halloween time, yeah, we yeah. did an episode called Spooky, about an ancient castle built to keep things in. The Death Whistle. Remember the Death oh, Whistle? Oh, Lord, that thing <laughs> right. was horrible. That was nasty. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just going to say it. You know how many times I had to play that just to make it work inside the episode? <laughs> It's weird. It, it is creepy. It is creepy. I had got told to put on headphones in the house. Yeah, I bet. No one else wanted to hear it. I guess so. I wouldn't want to hear it. Either. And then lost children and a prophetic dream and some just so many spooky things in that episode. Yeah. 
Then we had the four-legged soldier episode. Oh, that, was that was a, a good one. one. And of course, we talked about horses and mules and those kind of things. But then there were some unusual four-legged soldiers. Well, there were some rats. <laughs> rats. The <laughs> rat bomb. Uh, yeah, the rat bomb. And then uh, there was the Polish uh, uh, outfit that had a bear as their mascot, a real bear. A real bear. Yeah. Real bear. He traveled actually, with them. It right, wasn't a traveled, circus, folks. No, he traveled with them. He hauled, uh, hauled artillery shells and stuff like that. Uh, one of my favorite was about a little dog that somebody found on a, in a foxhole way uh-huh. down in uh, one of the Pacific Islands, like uh, near Papua New Guinea during World War II. And it turned out to be a, a some kind of a, a terrier, I believe, right? They're, yes. Yep. You know, it was really tiny little, well, it was only four pounds. And uh, But one of the soldiers who uh, found it, uh, actually or bought it from the soldier who found it, uh, took him, trained him, and uh, you know, cleaned him up and everything, and he actually became very popular around the um, uh, around the camp. One of the reasons that they liked him is that uh, he could hear Japanese planes coming before before the men before could. the men right. could. Um, and so when they saw him run for the foxhole, they would um, uh, run they them. would run. They would know what they would know to take cover. Uh, did we have a clip of that? that we're we do. Play? All right, okay. let's play a little bit of that. He found in a foxhole, but he ain't no fox, I don't think," said Dare. Bill knelt down to examine the creature. Oh, it's a little dog. I've raised all kinds of dogs back home in Cleveland, but I've never seen one like this, he said as he looked. I'll tell you something, though. It's not a he. She's a she. <laughs> Wynn bought the dog off of Dare for about $6, and he named her Smokey for what was left of her grayish blonde fur. After a bit of research, Wynn discovered that Smokey was a Yorkshire Terrier. Yeah. How she got to Papua New Guinea, nobody knows. Wynn found some food and water for Smokey, and, and uh, soon she was up and following him wherever he went. Uh, Corporal Bill Wynn, he was assigned to the 5th Air Force 26 Photo Reconnaissance Squadron, a photo research unit, which developed and interpreted pictures that had been taken from airplanes flying over Japanese positions. Much of their work was done in a large windowless trailer where film was developed and photos printed. Smokey was a regular fixture in the developing trailer spending her time curled up in a corner while Bill worked. When Bill wasn't working, he spent his time playing with Smokey. He quickly realized that Smokey was a quick learner. In very little time, she learned how to heal, stand, stay, roll over, and play dead on command. Soon he began teaching her more complicated tricks. Smokey learned to walk on a barrel, which was rolling on its side. Then Bill set up two step ladders and attached two cables between them. With very little difficulty, Smokey learned to walk the tightrope between the ladders. The other soldiers in camp watched in amazement as Smokey even performed these tricks blindfolded. The little dog appeared to love to perform and would jump around in excitement as the other soldiers applauded and cheered for her. Oh, wow. One trick that Smokey performed was especially helpful to the soldiers. Her acute sense of hearing enabled her to detect Japanese aircraft long before anyone else. When she recognized their distinct roar, Smokey would run around in circles, chasing her tail. Then she would jump in a foxhole. That was the signal for all the other soldiers to take cover, for an air attack was imminent. Smokey is credited with surviving 150 air raids in New Guinea. Pretty amazing, Mm. isn't it? That is amazing. A military newspaper called Yank Down Under, this was for the soldiers that were serving in the South Pacific, was holding a contest to find the best mascot in the Southwest Pacific area. Bill borrowed some film from the photo lab and began taking pictures of Smokey. He had her curl up inside his army helmet to show how tiny she was. In fact, we have that picture also. Um, Then he snapped pictures of her on the tightrope. With the help of several soldiers, Bill rigged up a parachute for Smokey. One soldier climbed a tall tree while two other soldiers held a blanket. Bill snapped photos as Smokey was dropped from the tree into the blanket with her parachute deployed. The pictures, along with the description of Smokey's exploits, earned her first place in the contest, and she became well-known throughout the South Pacific Theater. A short time later, Bill came down with a case of dengue fever. Dengue Mm. fever is a mosquito-transmitted illness, kind of similar to malaria. He was taken to a field hospital for treatment, and Smokey was left in the care of other soldiers at, at the photo unit. After a few days, they took Smokey to visit Bill. Seeing Smokey again greatly cheered Bill and helped his, to speed his recovery. Now, the medics at the field hospital recognized Smokey from her picture and yanked down under. They asked Bill if he minded if they took Smokey to visit some of the other patients. Many of the men in the hospital were severely wounded. Some were missing arms or legs, and most were showing the effects of severe battle fatigue. The doctors and nurses were amazed as men who had been completely unresponsive became animated 
when Smokey was placed on their bed. She would curl up next to them, and they would slowly pet her. Sometimes they would laugh or cry or speak for the first time since their injury. The results were documented in medical journals, and Smokey is credited as being the very first recognized therapy dog. Oh, good dog. Good yeah. Smokey. <laughs> That's awesome. After nice. Bill recovered and was released from the hospital, he had made it a point to take Smokey to visit wounded, uh, wounded soldiers whenever he had the opportunity. That's a great story. Yep. And uh, that's just a, a part, small part of that story. So to hear the rest of the exploits of Smokey, uh, you need to go back and listen to Four-Legged Soldiers. Um, and that that episode also started our oddity du jour. That's right. Oh, yeah, and, okay. and it started with the spooky nursery rhyme oh, that yeah. was due to uh, – it, a, a, it, it was a little town over in Britain yeah. that um, – Oh, it was a it was a uh, surveillance, not a surveillance, but a uh, gosh, I'm Al- losing an alarm. An alarm. An alarm That's right. the word I'm looking for. It was uh-huh. an alarm that kept going off, and who it would just choose was that on. Yeah, for and this the alarm? Was the alarm yeah. was some very weird creepy noises. alarm, yeah. but- and it was a spider that was no, setting off the alarm. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that started that started that segment, the oddity du jour, which right. I think uh, was a really good segment. It gives us a little break in our story to talk about something different. Completely Co- off yeah. topic uh, and off kilter. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Well, and then our next episode, we paid homage to one of our inspirations here at Remnant That's Studio. That's right. And it was our actually one of our first uh, deep dives on a single person. The whole episode was about Robert Ripley, yep. the famous Ripley, believe it or not, who had a very interesting life life himself and uh so if you don't know much about robert uh, robert ripley go back and look at season one episode nine yes uh called believe it or not and uh, i think if you'll you'll enjoy learning more about him and then the next episode was called great escapes we talked about many bit uh, people that had uh documented uh, escapes from sticky situations um, one was a clever cow it wasn't always right. people it was actually a cow one of them <laughs> Uh, to uh, a, a man who was supposed to be executed, but uh, got out of it somehow. And uh, let's see, uh, all kinds of different great and amazing escapes. Well, I think that was, okay, so when, when I met with you at your home to, to discuss whether or not you would be my co-host, right. you read, or you told me about, no, I think you read, you uh, read yeah. to me. Yeah, I a, want to see if you like my voice. A <laughs> part of... Uh, Dunkirk. Oh, the Dunkirk, yeah, the Dunkirk, Dunkirk story, story. Yeah. and yeah. that was in this episode. Yeah, oh, yeah, that that was a oh, what was the gentleman's name? I can't remember. It was a fellow who was a had lived his life as a banker and retired, and when the British army was trapped over on France, uh, the the beach at Dunkirk, the call went out for anybody with a boat. Well, this gentleman had kind of a used secondhand boat with a. That, Iffy motor, but he managed to go across he did some with it. Amazing stuff! With yes. that. He sure did. Yes, that's a, that, that story is worth hearing uh, all on its own. And that was uh, oh, then I, we we finished the year then with our Yulda. Yuletide tomfoolery. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, there was some tomfoolery, <laughs> and that began that began our annual weird gift list. Man, that's you want right. to go back and uh, check those lists uh, for for your shopping needs for yes. that weird person on your list because those 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 uh, gifts. Are still around, folks. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of them probably are. Yeah, yeah a lot of them probably are. Yeah, like like how to make clothes out of you know knit clothes out of cat fur and duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> Things like you that. Know, anyway, for, for for the yeah. On to season two. <laughs> <laughs> well, our first episode of the second season was called imposters. I always like that word imposters and I think I explained in the episode uh, about how it goes back to an old game show I used to like to watch when I was a kid. But we talked about different people who had gotten away with pretending to be someone else. One was a daring thief, one was a fake princess, one was a bogus Indian, and a woman who masqueraded as men. Oh, isn't that one of the great stories in there for uh, uh, a yeah. concert? Uh, the, mm, I wasn't going to go for the count yet. Oh, well, I, oh, I, I, think you I, I, that I thought yet. you were going to, because yeah, uh-huh. that was your favorite you know, topic, count, was Count St. Germain. No, he came on later. I think I've seen him today. 
<laughs> yeah, but that, that was the group the, the teenage guys that uh, pretended to be the Beatles cover band just so they could get in and meet the Beatles. Yeah, right? not the cover band, but the opening band. Opening band, band, yeah. That's yeah. Right. Opening band yeah. That was yeah. one of my favorite stories. Yeah. I yeah. love that story. And the guys grew up to be like... Normal people. N- well, you know, <laughs> functioning members of society. Yeah. They yeah. didn't go to prison for anything. <laughs> they, but they had the brains and the... A teenage yeah, prank. And the nerve it to do... It was a great to, teenage prank. Yeah. 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 Yes, and the Count of St. Germain was, you know... Right there, he was helping him out. That started our running joke about Absolutely. about the count. I don't know how many episodes <laughs> we're going to have to go through to just say when I said it. So right, <laughs> you'll have to go listen, folks. And then our second uh, episode of season two was superstition. Very oh, superstitious about talismans, amulets, salt thrown over the shoulder, and knocking on wood. <laughs> and I think we talked about baseball players a lot because oh, yeah. Yeah, among a, professional yeah. athletes, they are the, among the most superstitious. Yep. That's right. <laughs> they did it once during a batting. You know, yeah, bat, it worked bat, that bat, time. It's got to work again. Work again. Do it all over again. Repeat. And then we had Behold the Mermaid. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> this was hysterical. Good one. Um, a sighting by Christopher Columbus, an ancient church with a special chair built for a local mermaid. Right. A riot the to riot. free awesome. a mermaid. That the was mermaid my, riot. One of my that was a good one. Yeah. Stories yeah. yeah, happened in Charleston, South Carolina, uh, and then Barnum's famous Fiji mermaid, <laughs> yeah. and all kinds and farting manatees. Yeah, of right. course, you know. So, <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> so, and also, this started a segment here that that I regret that we ever did. <laughs> I like that we 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 love celebrations and we right. love yes. all. The wall celebrations like Donut Day, yeah, yeah. Whatever. whatever. So we started a calendar segment of weird is, holidays that were coming up. Yeah, at the time that the episode was to be released, and also things to look at in the sky, whether it was a, a yeah a eclipse so this, or yeah. meteor shower or whatever. And that's great. It's a great idea, but not necessarily for a podcast because well, people don't necessarily listen to us as soon as we come out, and then. There's always people that find us later. So if you go back and listen to anywhere between the par- first part of ep- season two to the middle of season three, you're going to have to endure a little calendar segment or fast through it. I, you yeah. endure, they're, they're enjoyable they to listen to. They mark the dates. But, but they're not going to be uh, relevant right. to your calendar at the time you're listening to it, Just perhaps. mark so. the dates down so that you have those crazy That's celebrations. True. Yeah. During the year, you that's don't true. Try like to celebrations like Yola Boca Flood, the Christmas Norse yeah. tradition, yes. um, and National then Pancake Day, you know, Wolfenoot <laughs> celebrating yeah. dogs. It's a, it was a great segment. Uh-huh. I just wish we wouldn't have done it. Well, <laughs> we it, was, could, it seemed like a good idea at the we, time. <laughs> not saying it's it's dead. It may just be revamped. Yeah, yeah, maybe. maybe. We'll right. see. <laughs> so you know. Well, anyway, and uh, speaking of uh, timely stuff, uh, we timed an episode to come out on February the 15th of 2021, which happened to be President's Day that year, Yep. with an episode called Positively Presidential, Weird Facts About the Presidents. A non-political yeah. delve. Yeah, it was a good non-political. No, we didn't, get, we didn't take sides. We just yeah. told you strange is- things that occurred to the presidents. I think it seemed like George Washington was a, an avid fireman. Uh, something yes, you don't yeah, know things about like that. that. Yeah. And then we went on to strange conflicts. Now that was an interesting. Oh, that was an interesting thing. It says people fight over the strangest things, and sometimes it takes very little to spark tensions into a full-on rioting. Yeah, Today we bring you stories, or in that episode we bring right? you stories about the Hatfields and McCoys, right, the makes pig, sense. pig War, okay. War of the Stray Dog. Okay, I can, I can see that. <laughs> the, I'm sorry, I gotta say it. I gotta say this one. Eggnog Riot. Eggnog Riot. <laughs> the Eggnog Riot. <laughs> you know that was at that was at a military academy with that one, I think. And then yeah. the Toronto Clown, Clown and Firefighter <laughs> Riot. Now, if you if you if you don't uh, get intrigued by that, you must be dead. Okay? Seriously. You want to go listen to that to hear about the Toronto Clown Seriously. and Firefighter Riot. It was actually clowns. Yeah, real and clowns. Dressed up clowns and real firefighters. Real firefighters. And it was a real riot, too. It truly did. It happen. actually lasted over two days. And then the war over a seven-year-old severed ear. <laughs> yeah. And the then, ear was seven years. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then the great yeah. sausage duel. Okay. Yes. So. <laughs> Fighting with sausages, perhaps. Well, you'll have to listen to find out. Then we had a really good episode about remarkable twins. You know, we've all been around twins from time to time, been fascinated by them. I have actually twin stepdaughters, and uh, we even used them somewhat in that episode. And uh, so all kinds of different uh, things you wanted to know about twins, 
but we're afraid to ask. Okay, I couldn't think of anything better right, <laughs> right. there off the cuff. So. It's like, is it right to ask them this? That's about conjoined <laughs> well, twins, actually, the, identical twins. Okay, a lot of the stories, I, I know what I was going to say, a lot of the stories are about twins that were separated at birth but had such similar lives. Yes. You can see a lot yes. of those stories, you know. We, and we and covered some, several uh, there were some unethical scientific studies done in, yeah. that, oh, in that vein. Oh, man, yeah, That we sure. covered. And then our, we went into uh, our next episode of Hoaxes and Pranks. Yeah. One of, and oh, which, in April. Yeah, yeah April Fool's, which, that's right. Which has one of my favorite stories, and I'm going to go ahead and read it. Oh, uh, okay. I, I printed it out. Texas football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know oh, what I'm talking about. no. In Texas, folks, She's take We're here in the greater cut-and-shoot uh, area, so it, this is right near near and dear to our heart. We're not going to be careful with this one. <laughs> People <laughs> take <laughs> football seriously here. Oh. Yes, they do. You want to talk about riots? <laughs> <laughs> Friday night lights shine over stadiums in big cities and small towns throughout the Lone Star All State. All over Texas. Yet one epic prank involving a college marching band and an opponent's football field brought a different kind of shine. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> In 1999, the Southern Methodist University Mustangs, SMU, SMU, were playing the Texas Christian University, TCU, TCU, horned frogs at their home stadium. During the halftime show, the SMU Mustang marching band completed their performance by forming their famous Diamond M on the TCU natural grass field. Right. And we should point out that SMU is in Dallas, TCU is in Fort Worth. Two neighboring but rival cities. That's you know. right. That's so right. These so are really rival universities. Before breaking formation, each band member reached into their uniform pocket, pulled out a handful of winter rye grass seed, and dropped it into the field. Yeah. <laughs> Where they were standing. <laughs> Where they were standing. Where they in were formation. standing in the formation of the M. And a couple weeks after the game, TCU officials noticed a strange new grass formation growing on their field in <laughs> the shape of an M. Them. Right. <laughs> it was awesome. That's that's a perfect prank. Like right, it's not hurting one. anybody. Yes. Right. But it's oh, yeah. it's epic. I yeah. love it. <laughs> it just grows a different color. Right. <laughs> then we had uh, odd accommodations. And see, like we found, uh, you know, if you're looking for somewhere different to go for your vacation this year. <laughs> this is a good episode. A good to episode find to out. listen to. Yeah, that we had or uh, to say, former I prisons. Never staying there. <laughs> former mental hospitals that have been turned into uh, uh, hostel, you know, youth hostels now and those Igloos. kind of things. So, yeah. yeah. Igl- oh, yeah. The, <laughs> yeah ice, the ice hotels. Right. That, those and are interesting some, there. Some Really cool underwater suites. Yeah. Right. Oh, and then uh, for Mother's Day that year, we had a special episode about mothers called Hello Mother. There was a song back in the 60s. <laughs> yes. of kind of, Hello Mother, Hello and, Father. And, well, we had Hello Mother and then a couple... Couple yeah, yeah, we had Hello Father later. Later, we had Hello Father, and I believe we had gift guying by <laughs> gift guying bides or gift buying guides. <laughs> Whichever way for you those want to episodes say it. too. Yeah, it works. We're working off the cuff here, no script. So, you know. <laughs> then remarkable inventions. Yes, yeah, those are some. That was, that was uh, season two, episode ten. Some of the uh, most wonderful, bizarre, and downright weird contraptions. Yeah, that was the. Oh, I think that was the one that had the uh, pistol mousetrap. Oh, right? yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But people didn't didn't really uh, take off. People yeah. didn't want a loaded pistol on their pistol on their kitchen floor. And the and the oddity on that one is about cat chunky. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No cats were hurt in the recording of that episode. I'm just warning you now. <laughs> now this was one of our favorite ones called Submarines and War Machines. Oh, that was great. Which we uh, it, uh, dove into all different kind of weird contraptions that had been invented for warfare, and uh, well, with the varying degrees of, uh, uh, of success. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they varied <laughs> widely. <laughs> uh, let's listen to a little clip from that one. You got that ready? I do. D-Day landings, which occurred in June of 1944, the British Directorate of Miscellaneous Weapons Development. Now that's a title. I love that. That would be awesome. I love that department. The DMWD. I want to say it again. The British Directorate of Miscellaneous (laughs) Weapons Development uh, was tasked with developing a weapon that could penetrate the concrete defenses of Hitler's Fortress Europe which was an extensive system of Nazi coastal fortifications. So they came up with the Panzan drum, an enormous device with two wheels connected to a drum-like axle with rockets on the wheels to propel it forward. The axle drum was packed with explosives. Now, you know, this sounds like something that Wiley Coyote might have uh, uh, dreamed up, I'm thinking. Uh, in fact, I wonder if maybe the DWMD might have become the Acme Company after the war. But <laughs> I was going to ask. 
The idea was that it would propel against enemy defenses, exploding on contact, and blasting a gap big enough for a tank to drive through. Sounds like a great idea, right? Well, there was a lot of excitement on the day that they decided to test it out. Quoting from Mr. Donnell's article, when it was tested on an otherwise peaceful English beach, things didn't go quite as planned. It wasn't peaceful anymore. <laughs> the 70 slow-burning cordite rockets attached to the two 10-foot uh, steel wheels sparked into action, and for about 20 seconds, it was quite impressive. That is, until the rockets started to dislodge and fly off in all directions. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a wild right, exactly. Come on, our cartoon. Sending a dog chasing after one and generals running for cover. The rest was sheer chaos as the Panjan drum charged around the beach completely out of control. <laughs> <laughs> Unsurprisingly, the Panjan drum never saw battle. Kind I see shame. men running from it, you know, screaming. <laughs> That's great. Well, now, here's another one, though. Uh, the, the, the Germans had their own uh, interesting machinery. Um, soon after the German army took over Paris in 1940, they found a strange remote-controlled vehicle that had been dumped in the Seine River by a French inventor in an effort to conceal it. This discovery inspired the Germans to come up with their own remote-controlled vehicle, primarily for use as an anti-tank weapon. The result was the Goliath Tract Mine. Which was one foot tall and okay. four feet long. Goliath. It was Goliath. one foot tall. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> maybe they didn't understand what that word meant. Perhaps not. Uh, but uh, maybe they thought the the impact would be Goliath in nature. But anyway, uh, one foot uh, one foot tall, four feet long, and it had tracks like those of a tank. It was designed to carry over a hundred pounds of TNT. The idea was that it could be steered remotely and driven under enemy tanks and then detonated. But there were some drawbacks. The primary problem was that the remote connection was achieved by a 2,000-foot extension cord. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Drive by wire. Right, for oh, sure. oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> Which unreeled out of the rear of the chassis. Allied soldiers, who nicknamed the devices doodlebugs, quickly discovered that all they had to do was cut the cord and the vehicle was oh, immobilized. Oh, because they couldn't foresee that <laughs> happening? That, okay. Darn, we didn't think of that. I they hoped it would be faster, idea. not slower. It also had an extremely low ground clearance and would often get stuck and was very slow. Nevertheless, the Germans produced 7,564 <laughs> of these Goliaths, and they attempted to use them in several battles, but with little success. Now, there's a really nifty YouTube video showing some American soldiers playing with a couple of catcher doodlebugs. Uh, you, if you just go to YouTube and type in American soldiers playing with doodlebug, you'll see it. It's it's worth looking at. Well, and I'll, I'll post it. That's fun. That, that, that was, was fun. That was a fun <laughs> stories there. And uh, those are just two of the weird um, many. war machines. There were many other ones on that episode. Yes. Of, uh, yeah, the puckle gun. I like that one, too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and then then the next one was Hello Father oh, because it was Day. in yeah. time for Father's Day. Oh yes, and we did have gift buying guides for that one as well. And they're well, probably yeah. still good today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, oh, this sounds like it would be serious, but somehow we had fun with it. It was called Epic Disasters. <laughs> there were a few. <laughs> that was, Lots. Yeah. <laughs> Explosions, heat storms, floods, train crashes. Oh yeah, the crash at Crush. Crush. That's yeah. right. The yeah. the it was a publicity stunt gone wrong. Yeah, that was not a good deal actually. <laughs> Then we have, oh, these are two of my favorite ones, um, Monumental Oddities. Yes. Okay, Monumental Oddities in which, you know, we love uh, roadside attractions, and there are um, Quite many many places around the country <laughs> that have some of these, and uh, uh, we, we found some of the oddest ones, and uh, that's what you're going to hear about on Monumental Oddities. And, uh, you know, uh, on a recent uh, trip a couple of weeks ago to the Midwest, uh, Sir Kraken and I stopped in Casey, Illinois, and saw several of these uh, with, uh, I think it was the world's largest rocking chair and the world's largest pencil and the world's largest barber pole. Uh, they're always impressive to see. So yep. uh, you want to you want to tune into that one but we had so much fun with that one we decided why hold it to the united states exactly let's expand we that. came to the next uh, next episode was international monumental oddity oddities uh, or oddities oddities, oddities. <laughs> monumental oddities worldwide and uh boy we really found some great stuff there but remember that was like mannequin piss the two men peeing yeah, and, that's right yeah and you could you could they had a number where you could text a message and they would 
pee out the message. Anyway, That's yeah, so <laughs> very interesting. Not weird whatsoever, folks. Not at all. It's, it's totally loud. Uh, yeah, Monument to Lab Mice. That was another one. That was a good one. And, and then, uh, are you going to say it? Oh, yeah. The, the, the ultimate <laughs> was... <laughs> In uh, in the Crimean region of of Russia, the Enema Monument. The, uh, <laughs> this town seems, needs an enema. Well, it's uh, <laughs> well, it seemed like what it was saying. It was it was in an area of um, you know, you in know an area of uh, health spas <gasps> and stuff like that. So evidently, the enema was part of the well known treatment. Um, yeah, and but, they're celebrating. Uh, there, Phil, you know? Phil, your comment reminded me that reminded me of an old joke that I won't share here. But anyway. <laughs> Something about if the world was if the Lord was going to give the world an enema, he would stick it in this town or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Moving, Moving right on. Along. Mind no, game. No. This yes. was a this was an inspiring episode. Mind game. Yeah, I we think. go from that one to this one. Yes, okay. right. Yeah. So and and the teaser was the brain can do some really strange and odd things. Or, or uh, think it. And in this episode, or hallucinations, which you know they're always yeah. fun. Yeah. Uh, prosopagnosia. Herodilia, I think that's seeing yeah. faces and patterns. Oh, and that's stuff. when you can't remember. Well, don't people explain it here. Let them. Like that. That's yeah. right. Go listen. Yeah. Sensed yeah. presence and third man syndrome. Right. That yeah. fast is fascinating. And I think myself that's the and I are always together. Episode where we also had the inspiring story of the young man who'd been in a coma for many years, but the researchers found out a way to communicate with oh, him. Oh, that was awesome. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's so right. you want to go listen to the mind games for sure. Then next was abandoned places. Oh, yeah, the world's full of abandoned places. Yep, we built yeah. it, we Might left be. it, it's still there. Yes, right. <laughs> There's a lot of them, and they're, they're interesting to explore. You know, it seems like when I watch reels on Facebook, about every third one is people exploring some kind of an abandoned yeah, place. Urban exploration. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, would, or, I would love to do that. I'm a little mine. scared to do that. Yeah, it's, it can be dangerous. So anyway, we've got some interesting stories there about abandoned places. And then um, the next one was uh, just a bonus episode, State of the Stew, but it was our birthday. That's right. We that was our happy birthday, birthday to that us. Was our, that was our first birthday. It was first that's anniversary right. episode, I think. Yeah. Yep. And then? Then runes and ciphers. One of your one favorites. One of my favorites. Yeah. Yes. And we talked about uh, ancient runes, cryptic inscriptions, and the decoding of mysterious ciphers. Uh, and and we talked about how, you know, your regular Bluetooth, that logo is a yeah. rune bind. Yes, rune, rune bind. bind. Right. It's two runes bound together, and they stand for a uh, herald. King, King of Denmark, herald. yeah. That's right. From 800, eight, uh, 800 AD or something like that. That's right. Yeah. He was known for bringing communities together and, and communications. So Now, the next one may be one of our more Im- in- important and inspiring episodes. It was fun, too, but yep. it was called Kindness Matters, and we found all kinds of, uh, you know, in our, our, our society today, kindness, unfortunately, is kind of in short supply. Mm-hmm. And uh, we found a lot of really good examples of uh, where kindness uh, seems to take place. I, I, we talked about how uh, the two Supreme Court justices, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and um, oh shoot, I can't think of the other guy's name. But they were they were on opposite. They were complete sides opposite sides. Yeah, of the political they, they, they both they, then... they just died. It'll come to me later, and I'll and I'll, I'll say it when it doesn't matter. But. Uh, uh, yeah, they were best friends, you know. Yes, they were yes. best friends, and so. And um, we touched yeah. on uh, the life of Fred Rogers, right? And some yeah. of the things that he he accomplished. So, so it, it showed that we can find ways to be kind to each other, even if we disagree about things. Then we had two episodes about things that were in the sky. That's right. Look to the skies. Part one was about meteors and eclipses and things mm-hmm. of that that nature that that you natural can go phenomena, up, natural phenomena, and then part two. All about aliens. Well, we'll see. Well, not yeah. aliens. Yeah. UFOs. They, they questionable UAPs. phenomena. Yeah. That's right. Unidentified yeah. phenomena. In the news again recently here, too. And then, of course, uh, our 23rd episode <laughs> happened right around. One. Yes, it happened right around Halloween, and so it was curiously interred. Right. Weird burial customs, odd gravestones, and those who are curiously interred. And it was one of my favorites because you know, I love cemeteries. Yeah. And we touched on cemetery symbols and then the, the grave yeah. sites of the paste eater. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and a couple witch graves. Sticky so. subject. And there was, that, there was also that lady that was buried in her Ferrari. So, yes. You know. Yes. yes. Yeah. And the little girl that was her mother buried her in a uh, grave that had uh, stairs going. Out a window, yeah. yeah. Had yeah. stairs going to, yeah. Yeah. She could go check the on The side window. Yeah. 
Uh huh. Oh, and then we had some incredible survival stories. Oh yeah, this was amazing. People with incredible survival stories, and uh, you know, here's a little teaser for that episode too. The oddity they jure that day was bananas. Now, if that doesn't get you, picked, <laughs> you know, you're going to I listen think, to it. Right. You know, I'm going to gonna run right to, to that one first. Well, I'm like not now. entirely sure about that, but I think it. I think it was about radio radioactive bananas or how well, now, bananas now we're talking are radioactive. radioactive. Now yes. that's entertainment but right now there. You know, you're going to pause this episode and you're going to go listen to that and then come back. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Think of this episode as your guide to our previous, our, right. your roadmap to your our roadmap. previous. Yeah. You. Yeah. If you are old enough to remember what a road map is, anyway. <laughs> it's not ways, folks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Peculiar Mysteries, which oh, I think yeah. we ought to revisit because there's so many Similar. mysteries. Well, many of these we're going to go back and revisit, I think. Yeah. Yeah, um, put an asterisk stuff. by that, please. Oh, we've got aster- <laughs> I'm sorry. My whole my whole, f- my whole whole pages here are all asterisks. Oh, good. You want to go listen to them? <laughs> well, the asterisks are the ones that had the uh, calendar segments. Oh, is- oh, that's no. what that's about. Oh, I don't know. It's I just a- thought I had you were visiting them all. Segments. I was giving it no, up. No, we do need to revisit <laughs> some, but maybe not all of them. And then we ended up, we rounded out the, the year for... Um, uh, with leftover stew, yeah, just bits of random trivia and bizarre stories that didn't make it into our episodes because when Up we to that point for yeah. sure, yeah, when yeah, we piece, research, pieces left over, yeah, we get so we pull so much together. So much. We, you wouldn't believe the amount of information we cut. Yes, we, we, yeah, we, and we have yeah. to pick and choose. So, mm-hmm. so that was that was random bits of trivia, right? And then we moved right on into season three with strange medicine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I listen. I, uh, when I go work out of the gym, I like listening to our old episodes. And I listened to this one the other day, and I had forgotten how strange some of these were. Yeah, <laughs> really bizarre. I'm just going to say, you guys found some of the most best random stories for all of these episodes. But yeah. That one, you found some really bizarre ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like Mellified Man. Right. That's Seriously. that was. <laughs> and they ate it. Yeah, the uh, yeah the human candy bar basically. Seriously. Well, and the uh-huh. reason that that. Uh, I want to say zombies, not zombies. Mummies. The reason mummies are so scarce is because people ate them yeah, for so. medicine. Anyway. Uh, seemed like a good idea oh, at the time, I guess. Joy. All right, Phil, this one's yours now. This one's one you love. Mysterious, Mysterious People, people. Yes. Season 3, Episode 2, yes. which the star of the show was... The Count, Count of St. Saint Germain. Germain. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I thought he was an imposter. That's not no, true. No. He was a mysterious no, person. Mysterious he was people. Mysterious that's people. right. Yeah. That's was, right. Yeah, it was yeah. season 3 that I kept bringing him up yeah because, that's right you know, he's still he around. shows up throughout the season yeah. i think yeah i think i mentioned him once or twice in four already <coughs> <laughs> minus this episode right but there are so many mysterious people throughout history absolutely uh but there's also so many weird celebrations that was the next one oh, yeah. that right. was an awesome one i right. did like that one that weird really celebrations cool. and that's that's where we had the uh the uh, guys in spain Dressing up as devils, devils, jumping over babies. Jumping over babies. <laughs> That's their right. Their monsters standing by and put them on the ground for this to happen. See, and in El Salvador, <laughs> there was the they were they were soaking rags in kerosene and throwing them at each other yes. in, in celebration of the volcano. Yeah. And, and so you, you don't want to miss those episodes. And, and, and I just got the hair freezing one. Hair gotta, freezing one. Yeah, hair freezing, good, yeah, the hair freezing right. thing. I just got to stop and say, first of all. His memory is so good when it comes to this kind of stuff. <laughs> when we rec- we record ahead of time, and then you know Phil does his magic, and then we listen to it one last time before we release it. It's brand new to me. Right. I could have recorded it a couple weeks ago, just a couple weeks Some ago. Some of them and were recorded a couple yeah. weeks ago, <laughs> but it's brand new. I'm like, oh, oh, that's a cool story. <laughs> we like, wrote- I didn't come up with that. <laughs> we said that. Oh, that's oh, cool. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh, yeah. We- yeah. Weird celebrations. There was quite a few really, really. <laughs> good ones in that right around the world of just uh, well crazy... and, I, and i'm thinking that's where the toe wrestling one was uh, too, you <laughs> or, know. or the worms well yeah. a lot of the yeah. celebrations or, or turned the, out or the worms yeah, yeah, yeah. It turned out to be weird competitions yeah, right. oh, yeah. True. um and then how we... drunk can you get to play yeah. with worms i'm just asking yeah. i got a story I, I got us a new celebration and the rules <laughs> yeah. over that Impressive. competition hey, hey, is hey. is yeah. yeah what you can Ooh, and can't do impressive. yeah exactly um, no you cannot water the ground and then we had an episode. <laughs> oh, this right was for around, Valentine's yeah, Day. Yeah, yeah. Right around Valentine's. nice love stories that oh, were people yeah. who how they how people met in odd, peculiar ways. So <laughs> it was called Strange <laughs> Love. Yeah, they were nice love stories that could either warm your heart or turn your stomach. Then turn, oh. Yeah, no. <laughs> perhaps both. There was oh. some. There was some. Yeah. And then this this next one was one of my favorites. Um, treasure Hunt. Yeah, oh, this, was this was really a good, good one. Yeah. yeah, I like that one. 
There was that, that couple in California that found all that buried treasure on oh, their property. And they Actually, just the dog were, found it. Yeah. The dog found it. And then That's they right. thought they were done and they kept finding more. More know, and more, more and more. And amazing. there's some treasure hunts that we cover in there that that haven't been quite completed oh, yet. That's so right. that's if right. you can still some be money, out there, folks. Get you busy. Need, you need a little extra cash, maybe you could find one of these. Yeah, that's right. Just remember, always go with a buddy. Now, episode six of season three was called Time Warp. And uh it was kind of uh, you technical. Know you want to sing the song. Kind you know of you know. uh, Kind of a. Uh, it, was, yeah. it was very technical. It was very, very technical. I mean, a lot sciencey. of information. We were. I was explaining, you know, how you know the the difference between the Gregorian calendar, the Julian calendar, and the Gregorian calendar, and you know how uh, leap year is figured and all this oh, kind yeah. of stuff. And it was, you know, pretty technical. But and then, then the oddity comes up. <laughs> the oddity itself. And Leah Which comes up I with totally this. made that episode. Maybe the it, one of the best clips we ever have the, done. This was probably the best reason why we started the audit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go, guys. Wow. The, okay, my brain is hurting. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's take a little bit of a break. And now for something completely off topic and off kilter. Brace yourself for the oddity du jour. Can, and get into a very shallow and fun oddity. <laughs> okay, so do you remember when McDonald's had characters that promoted the restaurant? Like Ronald McDonald, of oh, course. Yeah. The Hamburglar. The Hamburglar. The Hamburglar. Yeah. What else? Do you remember? Uh, wasn't oh, there a Mayor McCheese or something like Mayor that? Mayor McCheese. Um, Go ahead. Oh, come on. Do you remember? Grimace. 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 You gotta say Grimace. Grimace. Yeah. I was. So, okay. And the wastebasket was a character itself, I seem like. I think so. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It was really a bizarre world. Okay. (laughs) So, can you describe what Grimace looked like? Do either one of you remember him? Oh, come on. He was like one of the favorites. Wasn't he just a sound? I don't even remember. uh, No, he was like this big purple monster. Oh, okay. Snuffleupagus. Yeah. No, no, I need to show you. Getting them mixed up. <laughs> but, okay, so listen. Know your Henson characters. I was gonna say, I think Grimace was pretty much everyone's favorite McDonald's character, but maybe not. You guys. <laughs> I was always but, a hamburger. But so, he you know. was—he was at least one of the most recognizable faces. In or the spite, first three letters. In spite <laughs> of his negative name, he was a lovable and happy purple creature. Okay. But but what was he supposed to be like? Ronald McDonald was, you know, he was a clown. And yeah. the Hamburglar was, was a, a hamburger. hamburger. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and all of that. Okay, so what was what was Grimace supposed to be? Yeah. Well, Secret we, sauce? Cluster of grapes, oh, maybe. Uh, you, you, this is going to blow y'all's <laughs> mind. Okay, so Wikipedia states that Grimace was a monster, and I'm good with that. But was he really? In a 2021 article for People... Dot com, Dave Quinn writes that Brian Bates, a manager of McDonald's in, of a McDonald's in Canada, revealed shocking news that Grimace is an enormous taste bud. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. A taste so, bud. A taste bud. So if no you look, wonder he's so happy. <laughs> if you look at a cross section picture of a taste bud, then Sure, why not? Well, sure. Okay, listen, I'm not buying it. All right. At one point in 2012, McDonald's tweeted that Grimace, because this is, you know, this is like, we need to know. Okay. Right. right. It's important <laughs> it, it's stuff. Time. Inquiring minds. It's I mean, time. really. Sixty minutes. What are you doing? So You're Mc- taking too long, people. I mean, come on. You're supposed to tell us these things. <laughs> McDonald's tweeted that Grimace was, quote, the embodiment of a milkshake. Though others and still insist he's a taste bud. Uh, what? Purple. Okay, it doesn't look like so, any milkshake. I don't think. So, right. of a milkshake. milkshake. He yeah, looks I gotta bring nothing. up Grimace's picture. Yeah, y'all, I, y'all I'm still it. stuck on the whole idea as a taste bud. As a taste bud, I know. I mean, I could do that. Okay, I'm just pausing it because... A purple milkshake or a purple, purple. taste bud? Okay, <laughs> going on, moving on. Well, the I purple can, thing, deal with tongues, deep colors, reds. Who knows? But the milkshake? That's just nasty. <laughs> Here we go. That, I mean, that's dealable. Okay, so but McDonald's tried to yeah. offer some clarification um, in, in all this confusion in a milkshake. statement to people, which is where this article appeared. Whether he's a taste bud, a milkshake, or just your favorite purple blob, both of y'all are Googling Grimace. Seriously? I should have brought a picture. Oh, I see, him. I see him, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So whether he's a, a taste bud, a milkshake, just your favorite purple blob, the best part about Grimace is that he means different things to different people. <laughs> <laughs> the spokesperson said, whatever he is, 
We're just proud our bestie makes people happy. Still not buying it, people, okay? Well, he looks more like I, a taste bud than a shake. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there's okay, a whole I'll lot give, of shaking going on. I'll there's give nothing, you there's that. no straw there or anything. Right? Okay, now well, listen. I, maybe, that's the, maybe that's the scarf. Let's no, look at Grimace's. Let's look at Grimace's history. Okay, he was first introduced in 1972 as Evil Grimace. Oh. He had the same purple shape, but four arms, and in a commercial at the time, swiped all of the cups from McDonald Land to stop anyone from having milkshakes or Coca Cola. But because this was scaring people, yes. <laughs> it was scaring children. Yeah, in the 70s, they were uh, having in time. Yeah. Just marketing. Yeah. Roy T. Burgo Jr., McDonald's previous vice president of advertising, stated, We changed him to a soft, plush, two-armed blob of a sweetheart who only wanted McDonald's milkshakes and to hang out with Ronald. Okay? Uh, okay, so he's a taste buddy so, milkshake. Yeah, Gee, okay. He's okay, I can deal with this. Well, no, no, okay. But not the embodiment of a milkshake. Here's That's totally the thing. different. I think they sent him to reform school. <laughs> As a child of the 80s, Obedience he grew school. up eating copious amount of McDonald's, all while playing in McDonald's land playground with all the characters as my personal friends. I feel that I carry more clout than any old stuffy businessman. And I'm here to set the, the record or straight. Or any of the two of us. Um, yeah, she's right. claiming ownership. Because, well, y'all couldn't even remember Grimace. Who? Who? <laughs> so, so if he was created as a taste butter, the embodiment of a milkshake, that just doesn't fly if he was negative to begin with yeah are we supposed to believe that they were trying to sell more happy meals with an evil taste bud or an evil milkshake i have no idea <laughs> so grimace is grimace plain and simple he's a huggable smiling giant friendly taste bud monster thingy and that's that <laughs> okay taste bud <laughs> i will i will post a picture of grimace and i post a picture of a cross section of a taste bud they do look similar but i think it's just coincidence okay <laughs> i'm surprised no, no, keep, at how going. oh really keep is going. there more to it yeah, oh, yeah, more. oh yes <laughs> now back to the brainy stuff <laughs> Not sure how to follow that up. <laughs> Let it go. Yeah, we we need uh, Juliet saying you dropped a clanger there. He dropped a clanger there. <laughs> okay, okay. There we go. He is a rotund purple being of intermediate species with short arms and legs. He is known for his slow-witted demeanor. Slow-witted demeanor. His most That's common expression is the word. <laughs> I wonder, wonder who stole that. Okay, so is that a milkshake? Uh, or yeah, a it's, it's Patrick. Like... It's Patrick's grandfather, Patrick Starr. <laughs> I didn't. I never thought you'd be a SpongeBob groupie. <laughs> I love SpongeBob. Yes, I, I hate SpongeBob. <laughs> fun oh my but, goodness that was uh, yeah. i can't yeah. that was the comic relief of the serious <laughs> and i just episode. want you to know folks they originally asked me to edit that out <laughs> i'm just <laughs> saying it out loud we were that going that you, you need best. Script. comedy gold there <laughs> you need best phil you need best <laughs> who needs a blooper episode you just leave right we leave, leave them all in <laughs> Well, then our next episode, moving right along, was our next deep dive on an individual. This was a really interesting uh, person who lived back in the eighteen late 1800s, early 1900s. You might have heard of the name Nellie Bly. Oh, she's amazing. Really amazing uh, woman and, uh, you know, credited with really um, uh, great accomplishments uh, in journalism. Most notably, uh, she had herself committed to an insane asylum. Uh, so that she could write about it once she was released. And, yeah, uh, that. Yeah, she got in, and yeah. then she had to figure out how to yeah. get out. <laughs> well, it was, she had to prearrange with right. somebody to come get her out, but uh, but it was ten days later, you know. So oh, that's still eternity. So she acted like she was insane the whole time, but uh, you know. Anyway, and that that episode started uh, a well, not really a segment thing, but. But a an episode, a type of episode. It was called portrait, yeah. where we focus on one person in history, right, yeah. Yeah. or or two people. Yeah, because there's a couple of those coming. Yes. Yeah. Then we talked about some cryptids, American monsters. Yes. You know. um, yes, we did. <laughs> and uh, you know the those boogie boogeyman you hear from all the time when you're a kid, or this if you've ever been on a snipe hunt, you know. <laughs> well. Yes. 
Maybe these were real, maybe they weren't, but they certainly are real legends. And uh, that was uh, episode eight of season three. And then episode well, nine, we, we couldn't just stop with America. Right. We again. went on around the world. Yeah. Found some really interesting stories of, uh, I have never heard of most of them before, <laughs> but they were certainly strange and bizarre. Then number 10 of that uh, third season was geographic oddities. You know, I love geography. That was my major. It's what I taught most of the time. And so we found some really strange and wondrous geography uh, from all over the world. Oh yeah, it was a good one. That yeah. was really, that was really, really good. And yeah. then, then moving into the weird again, we uh, far uh-huh. out foods, uh-huh. and uh, we we came up with some of the weirdest dishes or stories about some yeah. of the weirdest dishes. We didn't cook them ourselves. No, we didn't try. Um, we didn't try this at home. <laughs> but uh, we had what tuna eyeballs yeah. and, and all of that. But one of my favorites. The sour toe cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Up in the Yukon, there is the <laughs> yeah, nasty. there is an old trapper that lost a toe and it found its way into, into a, some. Into so, a, I don't into remember a, if it into was a dry, vodka. In, after dinner drink. After dinner well, drink. Well, I don't remember if it was vodka or whatever, but but yeah, like the tequila with the with the worm. This, this particular kind of vodka one with had a the toe. toe yeah. But when they serve it. They serve the toe in the cup, and you have to. I, there's a whole. You got to leave it. Yeah, you have to leave it. Don't and take you it with you, folks. Not it swallow ugly. it, but let it. But you have to touch they're, they're, it. Their saying was, "Drink it fast or drink, drink it, it slow, slow, but your lips must touch that, that gnarly, gnarly toe." toe. That's yeah. right. That's right. But there were people that actually swallowed it. Oh yeah, and then they have to go <laughs> get another toe. So yeah, so and there were people that uh, said yeah. that they donated their toe, or they. They pledged to donate their toe yeah, at the end of, the end of their life. When for, they were done with their toe, they for the let, sour let toe cocktail. Yeah. You know, they got to restock. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> they do. Well, then we had a really interesting story, and I, we titled it as the strangest kidnapping you'd never heard of. Oh, and, this is a pretty uh, awesome yes. story. Uh, yes. This was about a. Uh, it took place in the Hermit Kingdom of North Korea back in the 1970s. Uh, I believe it was Kim uh, Kim Jong Il. Uh, who was the dictator at that time, actually had a movie director and an actress kidnapped from South Korea and brought to North Korea in order to make movies for him. And uh, uh, the story is really interesting about, uh, you know, how they got kidnapped, how they dis- how they managed to adapt, and then how they made their daring escape. So you want to listen to that story. Great story about the kidnapping in North Korea. Uh, then we had an episode called Secret Societies. Yes. And um, just about murky and, and yeah. weird societies like Things the Illuminati. going on behind closed and doors. And skull and bones. Yes. Uh, all the kinds. odd fellows. Yeah. yeah. All kinds of secret societies. And then our next episode was Signs and Symbols. Kind of goes along with Secret Societies a right. little bit. Yeah. yeah. Symbols. And, and that's one of my favorite topics. Right. But, um and we discussed so many different symbols and where they come from. I remember we talked about that medical symbol that's got the snakes on it. Yeah, yeah. the the staff of Caduceus. Yeah, that's and, what it is. Uh, and there's another one. I can't remember the name of the other one, but uh, oh, oh, one is medical and one is not. They're very similar, but they've been yeah, transposed. Kind of they've going. been transposed. <laughs> and uh, I think we also talked about the origins of the male and female symbols, yes. too. Yeah, So that's a good did. one to listen to. Then number 15 of uh, season three was called Sleep Tight. All about that mysterious thing we call sleep. Yeah, really. That eludes some of us, and some of us still can't get enough of it. We're yeah. Uh, REM and, sleep and sleepwalking and all kinds of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I've had sleep studies done, and I've gotten some help with my sleep. I'm sleeping great these days. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, then, uh, the, oh, yeah, we had one. The next one after that was called Criminal, and uh, it was about strange crimes and strange laws that are on the books various places around the country, <laughs> around the world. And we talked about we really need another episode on just strange laws. Yeah, okay. like yeah. like in Utah, it's it's illegal to uh, hunt whales. There you go. Um, well, so you well, know those Utah and whales. Kind of a long way from the beach, but you know. I've got a question: Are there lake whales? I, I don't know. Okay. Well, I don't know. There have to be salt <laughs> lake whales out there. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. And then and then because Yo Ho Ho was so mm-hmm. popular, we did an episode on pirates. Pirates, Arr, yeah. Arr. Mm-hmm. And then we did the next two episodes. This is one uh, of the more challenging one because uh, it was a it was a, a gentleman that I met many many years yes. ago when I was teaching in the prison system in Texas, and his name was Kerry Max Cook. 
And uh, Gary Cook spent 20 years on death row in Texas for a crime that he didn't commit. A horrendous uh, murder. Right. And so we brought him and his wife into our studio and um, uh, had a really great conversation with him. And uh, it took a lot of work to kind of edit it down. We had about three and a half hours worth of sound, and we got it down to two hours uh, in uh, somewhat of a cohesive uh, <laughs> timeline, you know, because uh, he tended to kind of ramble a bit and go, and go jump forward and jump backward. But uh, his story is really uh, horrific and fascinating at the same time. That's right. So I really encourage you to go back and listen to the Carrie Cook episodes. Then at that year, episode 20, this was a good one called Say What? <laughs> That was a good popular saying back in the 70s, back when the McDonald, uh, <laughs> McDonald and Grimace was being Grimace invented. Was but <laughs> but we said talked it. about a lot of idioms, uh, you know, those sayings and where they come from and what they might actually mean. I think idioms are difficult for people who are learning English because sometimes the words themselves don't convey the actual meaning you mean when you put the words together. That's right. Yeah, like break a leg. And then, then uh, Steve, you went. Oh, on I was on a trip. I was on about. vacation. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> on vacation. And so our next episode, Secret Spaces. Oh, just I love that the yeah. whole uh, idea of of hidden rooms, forgotten passageways, abandoned tunnels. Um, we had a, a co-host, my son Sam. And you did, did a nice job. job. I you think he did a good job, job. Yeah, and uh, hopefully. In season five, we're going to bring him on, not as another host, but maybe he's going to take over. Specialty spots here or there. Yeah, yeah. our oddities. So, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, and then then the next one was Walk on the Wild Side. Hey, baby. Oh, baby. Walk on the with, Wild Side. With my niece, Bailey, who yeah. is a zookeeper at the Houston Zoo. And we talked all kinds of animal facts and, right. and weird, and weird stuff. And she did stuff. a really good job. She, she did. did. Good deal. She did Thank do you, a Haley. good job. Then we had one called... Creepy. <laughs> well, we I had, what, we I had spooky. We did this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you wonder. We had spooky the year before, curiously interred, interred in and now we had creepy. Yeah, you know, because you got to get ready for that spooky <laughs> right? season. What? Um, and our oddity that time we actually kind of went along with the creepy because it was about how they this lady found Richard King Richard the Third's grave great, in England oh, yeah. under a parking lot. Under a parking <laughs> and lot. She just That's knew right. it was there, and they started digging, and certainly it was. Right. Ta da! The next episode was one of our absolute uh, most popular. Yeah. It's Once Upon a Time, oh, yes. where we we explored um, fairy, tales, fairy tales, bedtime, bedtime stories, stories yeah. yeah, nursery rhymes. And they're not as pretty as we make them out to be, folks. <laughs> that what is are the absolutely meanings behind true. them? Yeah. Right. Well, a lot of them were, their origins were not pretty stories. They were to warn. Right. Yes. And, and scare them kids. Scare, you know. scare the kids. <laughs> yeah. That's right. All right, then another holiday episode. Actually, this was kind of a Thanksgiving and Christmas uh, combined episode. We wanted to give you that gift list. That's it, right. You wanted to get it out for early. because people were clamoring before. Right. You know, hey, get the gift out list out earlier this year. So yeah, you know, we did did that, and uh, so that's a good one to go back and listen to. Then we had another deep dive, a uh, portrait, as you might say, only on two unique fellows, Harry Houdini and Arthur Conan Doyle. You That's might right. call them frenemies, you know, but they, they had the, the relationship they, really they were going. Well, they had a really good friendship for a long time. Right. But their friendship did not last through the uh, the spiritualism movement. Right. They both were, they were on very opposite sides right. of it. Right. Houdini was a doubter. That's right. And then I guess we had Christmas stew then, a mini episode at the end of that year. That brings us up to this current season, season four, episode one. Since it was the origin of the new year, we had an episode about origins. origins. Oh, yeah. Those are some interesting stories, uh, uh, largely about how different companies got started and uh, like uh, what their origin stories were of different companies. Like Puma and Re- Reebok? Uh, I don't uh, think it was. Uh, no, it was Puma. Adidas. Adidas. Adidas, Adidas. That's, Adidas. Right. that's right. Right. Started by two they brothers. They were actually the one company and then they split. Yeah. Because the brothers. Brothers got angry with each other. Yeah. Kind of falling out. Our, how the Shell Oil Company began as an antique store in, in London back in the 1830s. <laughs> <Right>. Seriously. <laughs> and then we had a quirky little episode called The Hand. Yeah. Uh, it's all about um, the extension of will, whether we use it to extend goodwill, invoke bad will, oh, symbolism. Hand gestures hand were a gestures, big part of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Legend and oh, lore. Yeah. And so, yeah, that was that was a weird episode, I'm just going to say. Uh, and speaking of the greater cut and shoot area, we, we <laughs> delved, dove into the hook 'em horns and gig 'em aggies symbols yes. of, of uh, yeah. two of our most illustrious universities here locally. 
And then we had, oh, this was a great one. Oh, National awesome. Parks. Yeah. yeah. This was really one of my favorite ones. You and, really could do an entire yeah, we'll go podcast ahead and on more. just National Parks. National yes. Park weirdness. Yeah, absolutely. And then, um, oh, now this was a, this was a, uh, it's interesting. People say, how do we get our ideas? Sometimes they just come to they us. They just walk in. <laughs> Sometimes and, they're they're there to uh, hook up your cable. <laughs> and that's exactly right. That's what happened uh, to this gentleman back last fall. Uh, a gentleman came out to hook up my internet. Internet, that's right. That's right. And I began uh, chatting with him, and uh, turned out I asked him where he was from, and he said he was actually from Cuba. He grew up in Cuba, Mr. Jorge Terrao. And the more he was talking to me, the more fascinating I found his story. And I thought, you know, we've got to get this story recorded. And so he came in and. Um, uh, spent about an hour with us telling us about not only his life in Cuba, but his wife and the difficulties they had there, their families there, and then uh, how, how they managed to come here and the difficulties of getting to the United States. And they've been here for about 10 years now, and so they were, they were doing very well. They're very successful here. And they didn't they didn't come over together. No. They had it to make his time. escape. Right. And then she made her escape, and they were both harrowing right. experiences. And then we asked him at the end of that interview uh, if he had anything else to say. And, well, let's just play that little clip, uh, Leo. Okay, this here is, we go. needs to be here in his own words. Or is there anything else you'd like to, uh, like to add? Anything that we haven't asked that you wish we had or anything that you want to say uh, ab about your story, your experience? Uh, uh, I, I, I just want to say that I'm so proud to be here. I'm so thankful to be in the United States. This country opens me the door and give me hope again, or I would say first time, and makes me dream again with a better life for me, for my family, my daughters. I can't be more happy, and I just want to, I just want people to think about it a little bit, about what we got here and uh, how about we need to protect it we need we need it we need that freedom we need that right to speech to say whatever we want to say because that's that's really big right um really thankful with you guys to give me the opportunity <laughs> to tell my story you're making oh. us all tear up <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much Absolutely. for no, coming no, here and telling us. It's, telling it's your my story. pleasure. Um, I guess that's one of my ways to fight back yep. against all the socialists and the communists that for years uh, have been killing people back in my country. Yeah, so inspiring. You know, he was such an in, uh, inspiring person to to meet and uh, talk with, and his story is just really incredible. Yes, yes, and he came here, and uh, and his wife came here, and they both worked so hard to to build a life, and now and right. they do have that have a good life here. Yeah, they, things that we take for granted. It was a reminder about you know the the specialness of this of this country. Well, then we had uh, our episode about called Psyche. This was one of your favorites, Leah. Or Psyche, yeah, Psyche, Psyche. yeah. Uh, which it, the teaser says psychology is a study of human mind. And of course, there are many strange disorders and syndromes. Oh, that's right. And we delved into strange ways that uh, things can go wrong in the human psyche. Yeah. And, <laughs> and very interesting stuff. But but the oddity was one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the kneading pole. It's a way to uh, it, to curse someone. In a very Norse way to curse someone with things you may have lying around the house, <laughs> such as a very long, large, sharpened pole and uh, and a decapitated horse head. So you know, just hanging around. Uh, yeah, I just think I saw that in on a direction. movie once, but okay. <laughs> so yeah, um, and then we did, and then we didn't call it a portrait. That's not in the the title of it, but race to the South Pole. So it was really a deep dive onto into the. Uh, yeah, it was a it kind of a portrait about the two middle, uh, two gentlemen, uh, Robert F. Scott and Roald Amundsen. Uh, Scott was from England, and Amundsen was from Norway. And in 1911, they were trying; they were both trying to be the first to reach the South Pole. And two different the, the teams different, of men. yeah, yeah. the different, different approaches that they took yeah. 
For sure. And the different results that they achieved and then what uh, happened afterwards. Yeah. Uh, just Very a really different. interesting story, I think. Um, then, oh, I knew we were going to do this one. <laughs> <laughs> Saw Premonition. This one coming. Premonition, yeah. Those uh, times when people have been able to know something was going to happen before it actually happened. There were a lot of really interesting stories there in that episode. One I'd like to revisit, I think, yeah. because there was so much more information that we left out and then more stories that I've come across in, in the yep. meantime. It came up, yeah. Right. Uh, we, so, some of times they were premonitions about things that were going to be bad that happened, that did happen. But then there were others, like there was a uh, the little boy who uh, was Johnny telling Cash. people at his church for months and months that Johnny Cash was going to come sit down. And they were yeah. going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then one day, he Johnny Cash in. and June Carter happened to be in New York where they were and just, oh, there's a church. Let's go in. That's about to start. And they walked in, sat down right, right by him. You know, that kid, yes. you know that child, was sit, every time he sat in that pew, he would just scoot over just a little yeah. bit more right. so that they would fit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and shoo anybody else away from sitting there. Now, yeah. this next episode was one... Uh, uh, that was actually referred to us by a person. By a listener. That's yes. right. By a listener, yeah. And uh, we named it Bee's Knees. Right. And yeah. it was all about uh, the legend and lore around bees. Right. Around honeybees. Bees, for sure. And then, oh, yeah, this was a good one. We had strange sounds. Oh. Sounds, From yeah. From the bloop and the, the wow signal. And yeah, we drilled, so Bill, drilled Phil crazy because he had to, you know, had get to the, put the, all that together. Clip it all together. But it, it sounds it was really good. great. It came, it came together well. It yeah. did. It really did. It was a lot of work, though. <laughs> it was wor it was worth it. It was fun. Then I like this one. It was called The Sisterhood of Spies. This was episode oh, this 10. Was really good. Uh, season four, episode 10. And which we talked about women spies. Uh, Matahari. From, yeah, and... Matahari was one. And then uh, some that you haven't heard of that uh, really did remarkable, uh, brave things. Um, then we had another interesting interview, uh, another visitor here in our studio. And uh, uh, Leah, you, you, you found this gentleman. So yes, you... Mr. Bill Torgan. Right. Um, and, and the episode was on hypnotism. Right. Because he's a local hypnotist. And uh, by, by profession, he was by profession to help you, you know, help you work again, uh, work out different things in your life, uh, addictions, addiction to, to alcoholism, smoking right. or, or uh, eating, that sort of thing. Seems to help a lot and, of people. And yeah. we talked about, you know, some of the some of the uh, concerns about hypnotism as well. Right. And, you know, and there are those, but it does seem to be helping some people. Then we talked about odd churches. Oh, this was yeah. awesome. Season 12 was <laughs> odd <laughs> churches. Right. Very unusual churches, yeah. Um, they they uh, were. I, I really like the one that, you know, comes as an inflatable. The inflatable church, <laughs> The inflatable church, inflatable yeah. church. <laughs> yeah, that was a good Started one. Started out as being. We're including inflatable uh, stained glass windows, windows and candles. So, you know. <laughs> I don't know how you get inflatable candles. Awesome. I'm not sure. And then we had another portrait. Uh, oh, this one is amazing. I, I learned about this when my wife and I traveled to Charleston, South Carolina, back in January of 2023, and learned about this fellow when we took a walking tour of that city. Named, his name Robert Smalls. Really interesting gentleman. Very inspiring story. So I encourage you to listen to that. That uh, was one we had a hard time getting through a little bit. I, I know that you could hear in my voice as, as I was telling part of his story. But I was tearing up at his victory because, right. uh, and mm -hmm. we just need to say he was a slave right. that um, that worked to free not just himself but his family and, and, and several and others, several whole, others, yeah, several and, others. Uh, just his perseverance. And then at the end, all of what at the end of the Civil War, all that he also accomplished. Right. Yes, he accomplished a lot. Yeah, it went from a slave to a United States senator. Yep. Yes, and right. voted back several times. Yeah. So then we had actually not a senator. He was a oh, congressman, a congressman, House of Representatives. Yeah. yeah. Oh, artifacts. Oh, artifacts. Landish artifacts. Good. Yeah. <laughs> really interesting artifacts that we came up with that were strange, weird artifacts. Yes. <laughs> so you want to go tune to that one? Oh yeah. Now I like their oddity. That one was yeah. all about the Hollywood sign. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're talking that giant sign that sits uh, sits on the mountainside. And originally was advertising a real estate uh, yeah, <laughs> development. Yeah, Hollywoodland. Hollywoodland, right. yeah. And then one of my favorite topics, missing people. Mm -hmm. yep, and, this uh, was really good. It was, you know, there, there's so many missing people out there. So many stories about missing people. But uh, but we picked some of the oddest, strangest, 
and uh, most uh, enduring stories yeah. like Baffling Jimmy Hoffa. That's a good word for it. Jimmy Hoffa was one, yeah, for That's her. right. Yep. People who have lost and never been found. Count of St. Germain. <laughs> <laughs> we Not did quite, have an imposter in there. Yes. We did have an imposter, a man that, that yep. uh, claimed to be That's right. a missing boy and um, turned out he was not. And then our last episode before this one was called Weird Science. And we had some really good stories. Oh, yeah, I remember the, the scientist in Israel who taught the goldfish how to drive. That's right. Oh, that's yeah. right. Driving goldfish. That's right. Yeah. That was pretty good. You know, you put that on your resume. <laughs> I taught goldfish how to drive. Well, and that's and our... they did it. It's not <laughs> like I just did taught it. Them. Yeah, and they successfully actually drove successfully. Successfully that's did it. That's the too. resume. Go listen to that one. <laughs> so that's our take on three years, four seasons, and eighty episodes of Remnants Do. We've come a long way, and we've had tons of laughs. A lot of laughs. <laughs> Some in one episode. And a lot of mess ups too. Uh, Phil goes overtime in the editing to make us sound good. Again, thanks for sticking with us all this time and for listening to us today ramble on about our favorite podcast. We would love it if you would reach out in social media and through mail and also those uh, reviews, too. Let us know what your favorite Remnants Do episode or stories or moments are. I hope what's been said here will make you want to go back and revisit some of the material that we've presented over the years, and maybe that'll tide you over during <laughs> our Intermission. I'm ready for a nap. <laughs> Speaking well, of intermission, I saw a movie the other day. It was three hours long, and I, they really needed an intermission in that movie. <laughs> was it Tombstone? No, it was uh, it was Oppenheimer. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, I've yeah. Heard that yeah. One's, and it's a t it's a hard it's a it's a hard story. Yeah. Well, in our next season, season five, that we plan to roll out in February or of March of next year, 2024, we'll continue bringing you the same wacky and strange stories that you've come to expect, but we plan to have some new stuff to offer. Yay! We've got some more interview-type episodes in the works. We hope to bring the podcast to YouTube and to bring more people onto the Stew Crew, namely Sam. Um, rumor has it that we may be he may be commandeering the ODJs, the mm -hmm. oddities. And while most of our episodes will continue to be free to listen to, we will also be offering more content called Leftover Stew Behind a Paywall right. for those that like to support us by becoming patrons. And as we hope to finally get some sponsors, mm -hmm. our patrons will also have early access to ad-free episodes. Just a few ideas that we're working on. And I need to also say thank you to uh, Judy. That helps research. Right. She, um, she, she narrows it down for that, me. <laughs> that's Steve's, Steve's wife, Judy right. Meeker. And then my sister, Brandy Nichols, who came on this year to uh, take over our social media. She mm -hmm. handles all of that. And then, of course, Harbin, who Harbin, does our, you're amazing, <laughs> our trivia challenge right? questions. Exactly. Some of the toughest questions I've ever seen. Right. <laughs> In the meantime, stay subscribed to the podcast and keep following on Facebook and Instagram to be the first to know when Season 5 hits. This is Remnant Stew, signing off for now, and until we return, please be good to yourself, be good to others, and remember, choose to be kind, and, and always, always stay, stay curious. curious.